Welcome to Sal Capes. I'm Cody Nestor. He's Todd Heal. What's up, everybody? And today the MCU is back, or is it, Todd? <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll talk about it. We'll see. Today we're here to talk about Deadpool and Wolverine. Uh, major spoilers are ahead. Todd, let's jump right into it. What did you think the story was? So basically we pick up uh, Wade Wilson. Uh, he's no longer Deadpool. Uh, he's kind of got turned down by the Avengers. Uh, he's uh, wearing a toupee, <laughs> staple it to the top a, of his head. Uh, rental car salesman. Rental car salesman. Yeah. Uh, separated from his girlfriend. Uh, he just Wade just wants to matter. He doesn't feel like he matters in anything, and he gets the chance of a lifetime when he's abducted by the TVA. Yeah. And finds out that he can join the Marvel Cinematic Universe proper, at the cost of his own universe. However, but. Uh, because uh, Logan died in the Logan movie. We'll explain more about that later. Right. But, uh, Wade decides he don't want to do that. He wants to go uh, time hopping himself and try to find a living Wolverine to help him save his universe and his friends. Yeah, that's that's the basic plot. I mean, as far as like plot heavy and like a bunch of exposition, you kind of get it away out of the way pretty early. Right. And you just kind of roll on through it as you, as you get going. Mm -hmm. Like you said, the Logan that died at the, uh, the end of 2017's Logan was, uh, what they call an anchor being. Yes. So basically that, that universe, once you lose your anchor being, it starts to decay. It starts to kind of compromise itself and eventually will, uh, end basically yeah. so that timeline with, will go away yeah so with that logan dead you know deadpool's universe is going to cease to exist so to stop his universe from dying like you say he's got to find a new logan and he does some time hopping there's a little bit of like multiverse of madness right. maybe done maybe done actually better than the actual multiverse of madness i would say so i would possibly. i would yeah i would say uh at first we see that deadpool thinks that um Logan, 2017's Logan, is probably still alive because, you know, he's got a healing factor. Mm -hmm. he, and he goes and digs him up because he thinks he's going to find him alive. And he finds our first real gag of the film, which is Logan's dead corpse. Right. His half skeleton steel and mostly adamantium skeleton still remaining in his grave where yeah. he was buried when he got, like, uh, chucked into that, uh, that tree at the end of Logan, 2017. Uh, we get a pretty kind of, uh, just starts off right off the bat with a pretty brutal opening credit scene, just like I think the other two Deadpool movies have. Yeah. What did you think of the opening credit scene set to NSYNC's Bye 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 Die? I actually liked it. I loved it. Uh, and a fun fact, I think our uh, IMAX theater we went to watch this in has upgraded our sound system because I felt that whole sequence in my chest <laughs> down to my ass. <laughs> <laughs> it was rattling Todd's ass cheeks. It was rattling everything I had on me, but uh, it, was, it was pretty awesome. He enjoyed I, I, it quite thoroughly. <laughs> I enjoyed that scene, yeah. <laughs> it adds an extra point onto his Deadpool score for <laughs> if you can rattle his ass cheeks. Rattling my cheeks. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I mean, to, to, talking about that like opening scene, like too, if you were kind of, if anybody was worried about about like was this film going to hold back on the violence or the language or the gore because it's now Disney instead of Fox proper I think we can like alleviate those concerns yeah. it, it doesn't it doesn't hold back on either there's plenty of violence there's plenty of like this gore salty language like everything that you expected like I didn't feel like it was tamed down at all no huh? maybe in some ways maybe even pushes it a little harder amped up yeah yeah in some ways like um you know, at one point, a certain person's skin is and muscles are kind of yanked off of them, and yeah. while their body is, their bones and their organs are left to just collapse into a heap. Pretty, pretty which, awesome. Which we'll, we'll still talk <laughs> about. Uh, I mean, very action heavy, like film, mm -hmm. lots of good action scenes. Did you have a favorite action scene that comes to mind? I think my uh, personal fave is the uh, Deadpool versus Wolverine and the Honda Odyssey battle. Yeah, that was mine. <laughs> that's that's literally mine. I there's, I mean, there's a lot of good fight scenes. Like you get the early brutal one with uh, Deadpool versus the TVA guys. It sets yeah. up your opening credits. Uh, next one is probably what? Going through them. Like, uh, before we get to the Honda Odyssey, there's, like, general, I think, first battle between Wolverine and Deadpool. Yeah. I think that might be, like, the first kind of, like, their first kind of, like, fight this is like their second go around right later on in the movie and there's like a running joke with a honda odyssey because yeah. he was a a again a uh rental car salesman so there's like a lot of like honda odyssey jokes and it actually makes an appearance and they're driving around in a honda odyssey with some other cameos later on but yeah that was my favorite i think the best fight of it is just like the close quarters like just really in your face, like at the end of it, Deadpool's just wrapped up in all them seat belts. So then the car's just a bloody mess. I think it's a lot cooler to me too, is because Wolverine just unloads this big ass just tirade on. Yeah, on, it's just like it's crazy. It's, yeah, I it's forgot. Awesome. I forgot about that. Yeah, it was like <laughs> yeah. you know, you don't think in a Deadpool film like it's not really. You don't. 
I don't think you've got a lot of those like in the first two Deadpool's where like somebody really gets a good monologue. Mm-hmm. But Hugh Jackman get to delivering like a good monologue before him and Wade just like go at it in that yeah. car. Actually, really, really good scene. It like sets a, the whole thing up. Yeah. Yeah. And speaking of that, let's kind of go right into that. We can't really talk about Deadpool and Wolverine without talking about Wolverine. You know, Hugh Jackman after years of hounding from Ryan Reynolds and I'm sure a pile of Disney Marvel cash backed up to his mansion. Hugh Jackman decided to come back after retiring yeah. the character, um, playing Wolverine after 2017's Logan. So, I mean, do you think after watching Deadpool and Wolverine, should Hugh have just, like, left Wolverine retired after Logan? Or is this, does this do justice and, like, justify him coming back and playing it at least one more time? You know, as much as that was a satisfying ending in Logan, I'm glad he's back. After watching this film, uh, I'm glad he returned. I'm glad he, they talked him out of retirement for this. Yeah, I mean, he's definitely still got it. Yeah. I mean, and he's went through a lot of stuff in his personal life, which I even joke about, like his divorce yeah. and some of that stuff he's had going on. Like, there's a scene later on where, like, because, like, they make a, a joke about, like, him wearing the suit, like, covering, like, his weight gain or something. Mm-hmm. But then you see later on that that might not be the case, yeah. like, with his, uh, his ripness. He's still chiseled yeah and i'm like wondering that's a very cgi heavy scene not to jump ahead i'm like i wonder if that's like is him cgi abs? i was like is that part of the joke like did they really give him like cgi ripness right. or is he that ripped and it's just a very effects heavy scene right and he's still ripped i don't know i guess i guess we'll never <laughs> guess we'll never truly know but yeah like right. i mean he still got it and i think i mean logan was like the perfect send-off for that character and in a way this movie respects that, and it also just immediately disrespects Kinda it. Kind of pisses on it at the same yeah, time. Yeah, <laughs> with, like, digging up his dead corpse and using it as a weapon against some TVA soldiers. Yeah. But, I mean, I could see maybe some people that were, like, hardcore, like, in love with that film, which, I mean, I love it too, but, like, maybe seeing it as, I don't know, would you say disrespectful? Disrespectful in a way, but, yeah. Like, I mean, it said, it's not the same Logan. He's from a different... A different universe where he also was kind of a piece of shit and failed the X-Men, just kind of like he did in Logan. So it's like Logan adjacent. Right. 2017 (laughs) Logan adjacent because he also kind of felt like he needed to be redeemed and like he failed the X-Men and got turned against them. And this this new Wolverine with the actual suit, like... um, he 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 has a lot of those same qualities. Let's say he's, yeah. he's very haunted by things that go on in his past, and he gets a little bit of not redemption, but he gets to kind of I guess in a way it would be redemption. He gets to kind of make up for it, make a up bit for it, yeah, by helping Deadpool kind of save his universe yeah. or, or whatnot. Um, before we kind of get into cameos, because that's a lot of this film. It's a lot it? of it's it. a lot of cameos. It's a lot of fan service and Easter egg mm-hmm. stuff. Which I mean, what we'll, we'll kind of talk about if if that's a good thing or a bad thing. Uh, let's mention our villains. Uh, the film has two, really. We have the TVA's Mr. Paradox, which I think is a character made just for this film. I don't, I haven't watched Loki. I didn't. I, I didn't, watched season one. I didn't yeah, watch season two. I didn't two. watch season two, so I'm not, I don't, I don't think, but from what I was reading, I don't think Mr. Paradox shows up anywhere else. I think he's for the, so he's kind of like your. He's uh, your kind of everyday guy, but he's just behind the scenes with his own agenda at the TVA. And then we have Cassandra Nova, which is a character I've heard of, but I wasn't really familiar with. Right. She's Professor X's kind of evil twin. Uh, I think they make a line about, she says that she even tried to, in, in, in whatever universe, like strangle him in the womb. Yeah. Like, <laughs> wow. you know, because they're like twins, yeah. basically. Yep. Uh, why don't you set up, what are, what are these villains and their kind of motivations that they have through this film? So Mr. Paradox, he kind of basically just wants to, he wants to kind of take over the TVA. He kind of wants to be the main man, and he wants to kind of, you know, start this universe that Deadpool's in, finish it off, finishing it crumbling by dropping Wade into the MCU proper. But, of course, Wade screws that up. Because, like, he, he's not so much a big fan of Deadpool as, like, some of the higher-ups that he's still right. listening to in the TVA that, like, they see potential in you, basically, right, kind yeah. of thing. Yeah. Continue. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and so, I mean, that's basically his whole thing. And he's also got this thing he's created. I think it's called the Time Ripper. Yeah. And he's going to kind of use that to kind of further things along and, you know, possibly wipe out other timelines if he sees fit. You know, he's just kind of power hungry. Mm-hmm. Cassandra, she's kind of been cast off into what we've known as what is the void. Mm-hmm. It's kind of where all the old Fox verse characters have gone to be banished. <laughs> yeah, quite a, quite a bit of them, yeah. And she's kind of just pretty much happy just being like the ruler of everything out there until, you know, Wade and Wolverine show 
up, and then that kind of leads to them hooking up with some other Fox characters we'll get into later. And then she kind of gets a wind of what, you know, uh, Paradox is kind of trying to do, and she decides, huh, and I'm going plot. to take over that time ripper, yeah. and I'm going to wipe out everything but the void. The only thing that's going to be left is the void. Because after he kind of tries to pull like a failed coup on her, someone, yeah. he uses uh, – Pyro. Pyro. He's one of our returning Fox characters. She's kind of spurred on. She was kind of happy just ruling that void. I mean, obviously, like, you know, she'd rather be out and about. But, like, she was just kind of in her place in the void where he had sent her. And after this failed kind of coup, that kind of spurs her on to use the same means that she returned Wolverine yeah. and Deadpool back to their universe to, to kind of come through and and uh, further her plot here to take over the the planet. And she does have this uh, creepy as fuck power where, unlike yeah. her brother, she can't just do the old, she has to actually physically touch her. She sticks her fingers into people's minds. Yeah, a lot of mind their head. Yeah, a lot of <laughs> mind fingering. A lot of like yeah. fingers jutting out of heads and stuff. It's very, it's, it's unsettling. Yeah. I mean, it's not overly gory or violent or anything, but it's very unsettling to see someone like rummage their hand around someone's head. Right. Even, even if it's not real, it's a very unsettling effect. Uh, let's get into the cameos and Easter eggs, Todd. Here I think we go. we're going to spend a lot of time here because, uh, boy, there, there are plenty of both. There's uh, a lot. Uh, let's start off with Wolverine variants. So Deadpool's kind of like skipping around the different universes looking for a Logan that he can bring back to his universe. Uh, the first one we get, obviously, we've already mentioned, was Logan Skeleton for yeah. 2017's Logan. Uh, he comes upon a short King Wolverine <laughs> is what he's been dubbed as. So a very comic, accurate, height-wise version of Wolverine. Yeah. Hops down from his little his little bar <laughs> stool. Uh, we get Weapon Omega Wolverine mm -hmm. for fans of that storyline. Uh, we get one of uh, Wolverine's kind of aliases, which is Patch. Patch, yeah. Where he, he, he goes around with an eye patch and a white suit yeah. and just kind of uh, incognito. It's 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 Wolverine's version of, like, Matches Malone. Yeah. But it even more looks like, <laughs> oh, you definitely, are you just Wolverine with an eye patch? <laughs> uh, you still have the same hair. So you've got the same hairstyle. Yeah, exactly. Uh, we get Old Man Logan, yeah. which was cool to see. So even though Logan was kind of, in its own way, a weird Old Man Logan, like, this was actual old man logan proper right i think he blasts deadpool from with like a shotgun, a shotgun or something. Yeah. yeah like where he comes up to the porch uh we get crucified wolverine from uh basically from the cover of uncanny x-men uh, number 251 like a uh, he, where he's crucified on the big x yes uh kind of uh, amidst a pile of skulls very cool visually yeah. like it's just that was just one of those it's like i mean all of them are for the fans but that one is just one that's like purely for the visual yeah, yeah. purely for the visual pu purely for people that know that cover and know that uh, that iconic image. Uh, we get some uh, kind of Hulk versus Wolverine tees a yeah, little bit. The brown suit. <laughs> yes, a brown suit. There's actually a quick shot of Hulk reflected in Wolverine's claws. That's kind of like a kind of a thing to an homage to Todd McFarlane's cover uh, of uh, Incredible Hulk number 340. Right. When I was looking up, uh, and the last one too, which is, I think I've heard that it could be possible, and it's like definitely someone that was cast as like f fan cast of a new X Men team. Mm -hmm. We get the Cavalry. Man. Uh, I, I, and as you're going through it, it's Henry Cavill as Wolverine. He's like working on his motorcycle, and as they're showing. In these different like shots of uh Wolverine, like you get a couple glimpses just like of his like arm and shoulder, and I'm like, well, that's obviously not Hugh Jackman unless they're like beefing him up with CGI. Because I'm like, that dude's arm is fucking swole, right? That dude's <laughs> arm is fucking huge. Hugh Jackman's a rip dude, but he's not that big. And then when it like come to be Cavalry, I'm like, yep. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, Henry Cavill still, yeah, he's still ripped as fuck. Yeah. What did you think of these? Did any stand out to you? What do you got for these Wolverine variants? Uh, I mean, I, I liked all of them. I thought they were all great. I think my personal favorite would probably be the brown suit Hulk one. Um, right after that would be Cavalry. Yeah. I never knew that uh, people... I saw an Easter egg video about this after we watched the movie, and there was, a th there was actually a thing where people were going back and taking images from Man of Steel with, like, the shirtless Henry Cavill mm. and kind of doctoring the image with claws and stuff, you know, fixing the hair. Right. I never knew that was a thing. But. Yeah. <laughs> now, people have definitely fan-casted him into a lot of uh, yeah. to Wolverine um, uh, a lot. I think, yeah, I think Cavalry was probably my favorite. I like the the... the, the 
the X crucifixion. Um, you know, a lot of you know, kind of good, you know, fan servicey cameo mm-hmm. kind of stuff here. Like they all kind of work. There's also a joke too, where not just the cavalry, you don't just see him, but Deadpool also kind of drops a joke about, "We'll come on over, we'll treat you better than those yeah. fucks down the street." He knows who he is. Yeah, yeah. he definitely <laughs> breaks the fourth wall. And knows where it's yeah. he he calls him the cavalry. Right. right? He's like, it's, it's a definitely fourth wall break there, but all good stuff for that part. Of it. We also get a bunch of Deadpool variants. Oh yeah, uh, we get Handsome Pool. <laughs> which is basically just Ryan Reynolds with right. long hair looking like the Highlander version of Deadpool, <laughs> just being real Canadian, right. saying a boot and sorry and <laughs> all that kind of stuff. He is uh, He's also the kind of the, the guardian, the caretaker of Dogpool. Dogpool. Mary Puppins. Mary Puppins, if you've seen like the the any of the the advertising material for this movie, you've seen Mary Puppins. You've seen Dogpool, a very unfortunately uh, ugly dog. I think she won a contest for ugliest dog alive. Yeah, maybe. I think in Britain and something like <laughs> yeah. that. Yeah, we get Lady Deadpool. Uh, I'm not sure if physically in costume, but definitely voiced at least by Blake Lively. Yeah. The, the credits confirm that. Uh, we get Headpool. <laughs> which is like disembodied head uh, flying around, which is actually voiced by Nathan Fillion. Yeah, uh, Kid Pool, which is uh, a very like much like a, a ten year old that plays a lot of Call of Duty. <laughs> very very nasty little kid. Foul mouth. Very very foul mouth. And we also get Cowboy Pool. There's a lot more, but there's also the the main ones are Cowboy Pool was the last one, also voiced by Matthew McConaughey. Which nice. Is, it was. I was like immediately. It's like this fucking Matthew McConaughey is Cowboy <laughs> Pool. Uh, yeah. I mean, all I think all the good stuff. I mean, I think Dog Pool and probably Handsome Pool have the most to do. Yeah. They get a couple scenes because uh, uh, Handsome Pool eventually gets used as a human shield, which is yeah. pretty pretty hilarious. Um, but yeah, I think all those were were great. The other kind of cameos we've got some like MCU cameos. You got John Favreau coming in as Happy Hogan. Happy. There's a there's a scene where. Wade's kind of trying to convince. I think it's set in 2018, trying to convince, like, hey, I'm I'm trying out for the Avengers. Yeah. You know, hey, can I get on board kind right. of thing. Um, I'm going to butcher this lady's name. If you're Loki fans, you'll you'll know who I'm talking about. Uh, Wunmi Masaku, maybe? Yeah. Something like that. What Cody said. Yeah, she's a Hunter <laughs> B-15. Loki fans will know her. She pops up. There's a repurposed uh, Thor the Dark World, Chris Hemsworth as Thor footage. Yeah. Which is a running joke because, right. like, when uh, Wade is in the TVA, he notices a screen of like future events, and it's like uh, Thor kind of like crying and holding him. Yeah, and there's like a lot of like uh, that's a running joke. He's like, "Why was Thor crying?" <laughs> like he's trying to like it's just a running joke. He's trying to figure out the entire yeah. film. Like it's it's, it's it's good. It's another one. Stan Lee drops in in some old footage again. It was like good to yeah. see him. Uh, I was reading, you know, he he's kind of appeared in every he's appeared in all three Deadpool movies now, so keeping that trend going to to see Stan pop nice. up there on like some of the TVA materials and stuff. Daphne Keene comes back as uh, X-23. Uh, Logan fans will know her. And then we get to some of your Foxverse stuff, Todd. This is where, like, the real fan servicey stuff comes right. in. Jennifer Garner pops up as Electra. Electra. What did you think about seeing Electra on screen again, Todd? That's the first one we saw, and I was like, oh. But not the biggest surprise. <laughs> not the big one. That, that was one yeah. I, I was one more. I never saw coming back. <laughs> uh, we have uh, also someone who's been, who was, I guess, at one point casted, but it, I know fan casted a bunch. Bunch. Uh, but I think actually was had been for years trying to get a film off the ground or be in a film as his character Channing Tatum shows up as Gambit. Wow, what now, is, we're talking like full '90s Gambit yeah, outfit. He's too. got the, <laughs> the full on. Yeah, Jennifer Garner has like a darker version of her. A more, you know, darker, maybe more modern looking yeah. Electra suit. But Gambit, he's Channing full Tatum, 90s. <laughs> he's coming right out of X Men like ninety seven. Yeah. Like he's got the the face thing on the sides of the face. He's got the jacket, the purple like you know uh, the purple shirt thing, whatever you want to call it. Like and he's uh he's really got his Cajun accent going. Yeah. Uh, what did you think of What did you think of Channing Tatum? That, that was pretty cool. I think I commented at the end. You know, we I think we finally realized what a bullet we dodged by not. Having a Channing Tatum yeah, Gambit movie. I really, yeah, because this is definitely making fun of him. Yeah. There's a lot of, like, what the fuck did he just say? Yeah. Like, that's a terrible Cajun accent. Yeah. Like, I really wonder what – it makes me wonder how he would have played it straight in an actual – film right. would it have been that terrible yeah like is he acknowledging this would probably have been a bad idea is that somewhat the meta of it but yeah there's a lot of like what the fuck is what he did ta- he say what the fuck is he talking about <laughs> like there's one point dead he's like
like just spouting off stuff. He's like, that's a lot of fucking exposition <laughs> to be missing right now. You know, that kind of stuff. Right. And, uh, but I mean, yeah, it's, it's a fun little, again, it's a fun little knot and it works. And like, uh, I mean, I enjoyed him for the, the little bit he's in the film yeah. and like, you know, before his ultimate, uh, fate here. But yeah, like I, I think it works too. You know, uh, Jennifer Garner, she gets a little bit. She's kind of like the leader, I guess I would say. of the Kind of leader the, of this band. The yeah. ones you said uh, would see. Uh, Aaron Stanford, he's back as Pyro, which we kind of mentioned. He he shows up. Tyler Maine comes back as Sabretooth, which has kind of been shown in some of the, the advertisements yep. and trailers and stuff. Um, they hype up a big fight between him and Wolverine. It's not a fight. It's not a fight. It's a, de- it's a quick decapitation yeah. of Sabretooth. <laughs> it's really just a, one of those things like it's like Indy versus the dude with the sword. Yeah. It's like, oh, you think this big fight's about to come? And it's like, bam, he's dead. Let me, yeah. He's decapitated. He's done. Uh, Ray Park shows back up as Toad. I assume it's Ray Park. I didn't really confirm, but it looks like Ray Park. I mean, what else is he doing? Right. I right. mean, you can get a Ray Park, yeah. you know. Um, not sure who plays her, but Death Strike shows up. She's yes. in some of the, like, uh, kind of group shots of some of the uh, the bad guys. Uh, Azazel pops up, yeah. which we see uh, from X-Men First Class. He's mm-hmm. popping up. Uh, we also get uh, X-Men's The Last Stand's version of the Juggernaut, uh, you know, the penis head Juggernaut. <laughs> yeah. yeah. The very weirdly made mm-hmm. Juggernaut. Not played by Vinnie Jones. Not this time. Not played by Vinnie Jones. But uh, we get that, uh, that version, X-Men Last Stand version of Juggernaut. And then the big two here, uh, I think the big, the biggest two cameos, or maybe one surprise, both surprising. I think one had more to do, but the first one I'll mention is we get Chris Evans showing up as we think it's Captain America. Yeah, we're led to believe it's Captain. Yeah, America. and I really wasn't thinking about this twist coming. Mm-hmm. It's so obvious when you when it when they pull it out on mm-hmm. you, but like because you're like he's kind of cloaked a little bit. He's wearing a very Captain America, like you see his arm. It's very red white and blue Mm -hmm. and you're like oh holy shit they got cat back they got chris evans to come back as cap yeah and he jumps down and does a superhero landing and deadpool remarks about the superhero landings oh shit like it's it's the big guy you know kind of thing and he comes out and he's like oh shit he's gonna say it and he's like a vent and deadpool is like you know you know going along with him about to say it and he's like flame on and he's human torch and he's the human torch chris (laughs) evans is reprising his role as johnny storm the human torch and he flames on, and then like as soon as you do it, they're like, "Oh yeah, that's fucking obvious." Like, Duh. that's what they're doing. <laughs> but like, it just it it really was. I wasn't thinking about it in the moment. I was like, you just see him so much as Cat, but you're like, yeah, he brought back his Fox first character. Like, I thought it worked. He we'll talk more about him because he like he pops up a few times uh, throughout the film, which is which is good. Like it, every time he's in it, it works. Yeah. The big surprise I think that surprised both of us, Wesley Snipes as Blade, back is back. as Blade. Holy fuck. Who saw that coming? I, ne- I mean, like, I, you know, with enough money, you can get any of these people back. <laughs> right. But, like, I never thought we'd see Wesley Snipes' version of Blade uh, come back on screen. And, and he's, here he is. He's just hanging around. Uh, he's just, he's back, and, like, he's... He's got a few of his same old weapons. I don't. I didn't really see like his full on sword. He's got like a shorter kind of sword thing. Yeah. Uh, he's got his glaive. Saw the glaive. I, I saw yeah. that a few times. And like, um, again, none of these guys really, other than Chris Evans, get multiple scenes. They're just kind of you get to your middle act, and they're they're kind of about, and then they get a yeah. little bit of a third act fight. None of them get too much screen time, but like. What did you think about what you got from any of these, but especially like from Wesley Snipes here? Uh, I mean, I, I thought all these cameos were great. I mean, you can knock me over with a cameo any day <laughs> if it's done right. Right. And, you know, in the context of this type of movie, you know, it's kind of hard to go wrong in a Deadpool movie to kind of fuck up a cameo. Yeah. And I think they did them all pretty much justice here. I, I got some kind of notes from uh, the Internet here to kind of remind me of what took place because there's a joke where uh, – uh, at one point where they're uh, they're driving to like their th- the third act fight. Oh yeah. And Snipes is like, I'm the only blade that there ever will be. Like I am blade, I'm the blade and then you, you get the Deadpool look in the camera like oh. <laughs> Marshala <laughs> Ali's uh trying to make a blade movie at yeah. this point. There's a part where Blade first meets Deadpool and he tells him he doesn't like you and then uh, a lot of people have kind of uh Deadpool replies you never did and a lot of people are like kind of uh, putting that back to like there was rumor tension between those two back on the blade tree. Trinity said. Oh, yeah, Remember? yeah. Because they were... That was, kind of at odds. Yeah, they were at odds, apparently, for that. And uh, he does drop his... 
famous. I don't know if you call it famous. Infamous, maybe? Infamous <laughs> line of like some motherfuckers like always trying to ice skate uphill. I think he changes it. They are still trying to ice skate uphill. Yeah. So if you're a fan of the first Blade movie, which I am, like it's a good inclusion. Mm. And it's it was neat to see him back. I mean, it's not – nobody gets a lot to do. There's no like – you know, Blade is not a, a, a central character. Neither is Elektra nor Gambit, but it's it's a cameo. It, it, well, I would say they're a little bit more than a cameo. They do yeah. get a little bit more than just like pop on screen and they're gone. Yeah. it's kind of like kind of like the Andrew Garfield, Tobey Maguire is like you satisfy the cameo, but then they're sticking around for part of the story right. too. For, yeah. for part of the third act, at they least. do have a, you know a part in it. Yeah, yeah exactly. Um, uh, some other things that I jotted down, some other Easter eggs and references. Um, we mentioned that uh, Deadpool, he kind of mentions that uh, Logan wears the costume because of uh, his weight gain since the divorce. Um, when there, we see a convoy at one point that Pyro's leading, we see the uh, Fantastic Car yeah. from the Fantastic Four. Um, we see the Red Skull, and I thought about this after, too. I, th- I I was right. I thought about it. I didn't mention it to you, but uh, we see that Red Skull's car, that like elongated Red Skull car from Captain America First Avenger. Okay. Somebody was driving around, and I thought I noticed that. Uh, in the void, you see a crashed helicarrier. We also see what looks like uh, one of Thanos' uh, Q ships from Infinity War and Endgame. And, of course, you get the, uh, the 20th Century Fox logo yeah. buried in the sand. Uh, in Happy Hogan's office, there's a bunch of keepsakes, including the half-finished cap shield and the first uh, from the first Iron Man movie. At one point, uh, they're just riding around in Deadpool. Deadpool. <laughs> Deadpool was doing like Spider-Man thwips. Oh yeah, just in the car. That's the only way they can get him in. Yeah, just to <laughs> just just to put him in there. Uh, spotted in the void, uh, Captain America's World War II shield, an old-fashioned Thor helmet, a stone wall in the shape of Wanda Maximoff's head, because yeah. she was crushed. At the end of mm. us, uh, Multiverse of Madness. Multiverse of Madness. That yeah. is really sticking that to people because that was horseshit. <laughs> uh, so sticking it to me because I think it's horseshit. X Men name checks uh, Professor X a lot. Uh, name check Storm, Cyclops, Jean Grey, Beast. Uh, Deadpool makes a joke about Van Wilder to Handsome Pool or Nice Pool because uh, he uh, he was Van Wilder back in the day. And then we get uh, Handsome Pool like, oh, is that how it's done? And turns the camera and be like. The proposal. <laughs> I just name drop it. Another Ryan Reynolds film. Um, after being told the Punisher died in the void trying to attack Cassandra Nova, Deadpool says, "Which one?" There's been a lot of them. Multiple actors have played Frank Castle on, on screen: Dolph Lundgren, Thomas Jane, Ray Stevenson, and currently John Bernthal as our last yep. to do it. So that's kind of everything I marked. Did I leave anything out, Todd? That you can think of? I think you pretty much hit them all, man. So with that, the big question I think. People will have to kind of wrestle with themselves. So I'll ask you, so with so many cameos, Easter eggs, references, kind of in jokes, uh, was it ever too much? Did you ever feel like it was too much fan service, or did it all kind of work for you? Yeah, actually, it all kind of worked for me, and I think it, what helped it is the type of movie it was in. Like, if this had been, like, a more serious, like, MCU proper type movie where we're trying to set up something, you know, Something happened two or three movies down the road, and you know you got all this stuff going on. I could see it kind of derailing it, but in a Deadpool movie, I think it worked just fine. I don't think any of it kind of hung out too long or overstayed its welcome. I think it just kind of served the purpose. Yeah, I think, um, like you said, I think in an MCU proper movie, like you said, it would be too much, too much, and too too much to throw. But you know, this is. Going into Deadpool, you know it's it's kind of it, it lives in its own world in a way. Yeah. Now you're bringing it into the MCU, so you definitely know they're going to play around with that, and you're also closing the era out on the Fox characters. Yeah. And yeah, it's a lot, but I don't think any of it was ever too much. It never got to the point where it was like throwing too much fan service. I thought it was just the right amount. Mm-hmm. Like you know, if um, it's it's definitely a little bit more than something like No Way Home. But, like, I still think it works. I never felt, like, fatigued by it or anything. Like, it all it all kind of worked and blended in, and it was a lot of it was funny. Yeah. And, of course, you know, that, that kind of stuff, which, you know, the Deadpool films do really well. So, like, I never, you know, people kind of have to answer that. I can see, I can maybe see some people arguing, like, it's kind of might be a little bit propped up on that. But, like, that was what I expected. Yeah. I mean, I didn't... From I never, this type of movie. Yeah, I never expected, yeah. like, Casablanca from a Deadpool script. Yeah. And I never expected going to the MCU that it wouldn't rely on a lot of this stuff. Mm-hmm. And I don't think that's a negative thing. I don't think it's I don't think it's so much propped up by it. But I could see someone trying to make that argument that it's very heavy with the references and the cameos and the Easter eggs. But, like, 
that's what I kind of wanted from this. Right. Like, if it would have just been Wolverine and Deadpool, would it still been a fun? Yeah, but I still wanted, like, I still wanted some of this stuff. I still wanted some of these cameos and references and the stuff we got. So, like, it gave me what I was wanting and expecting out of this film. Yeah, it's kind of one of those things where I think a lot of properties are struggling with right now is it knew its lane and it stayed in it. Yeah. And that's where it works at. Yeah, and we still get some of those No Way Home moments where they're introducing, like, the Fox characters, like Electra and Channing Tatum, yeah. where, like, they build in a part in the film where, like, they bring them in, they they show them, and then they give you, like, that five seconds of dead air. For the for that's right. for the audience for clapping. That, yeah. They do like they do in No Way Home, like where they when Andrew Garfield steps through the portal and there's a definite lull and everything, so they they know this is where they'll be clapping. They'll be yeah. coming in their pants right now. Well, like, that's something cool that I kinda wanted to mention to you is we saw this this past Thursday. We're recording on a Saturday morning after we watched this Thursday night at nine mm. at our local IMAX theater. Not, I wouldn't say jam packed to the rafters full, mm. but it was a big crowd, yeah. and it was the first time we'd actually saw a film with that big of a crowd in a pretty good while. Yeah, I'd say since I think I've said like it's probably it wasn't the same, but it was probably the most full I've seen the theater. Yeah, for a Thursday night screening, the last show of the IMAX of the night, yeah. probably since Endgame. Yeah, and it was pretty cool, you know, to see, you know, of course, you know, the, the pops from the people when the pops are supposed to happen. Yeah, you know, it was kind of cool to experience It's definitely that again. one of those films, I would say, like, if you're listening to this and you haven't seen it, it's definitely one of those films that's first run viewing. It's definitely best experienced with that opening weekend to first week opening audience. Yeah. It's it's better experience doing that than it is a Tuesday three weeks after opening. Right. You get those little crowd pops and the people that are that really understand what they're seeing mm -hmm. and like it's a little bit of clapping and stuff. Like it's definitely one of those films, like if you have interest in it, it's definitely better seen in that first opening weekend to first week it's out when there's yeah. still such a buzz and people are still getting those reactions and definitely yeah. it's not just Jeff and his bucket of popcorn <laughs> and his trench coat, you know, right. on a Thursday three weeks after opening. Yeah. Yeah. And, and like it was, it was good to see it. I mean, cinema is having uh, it's very up and down with yeah. cinema and releases right now. You never know what's going to hit. And I think a lot of people you got a lot of good things built in for obviously the first day to pull movies were popular. And it's not if people have superhero fatigue. This is not the same thing as a regular Marvel movie proper. Right. They knew it's going to be funny. The news are going to be jokes. It's going to be more, uh, you know, laissez-faire, whatever. Right. Like it's it, it's it, it, it's its own thing. And like, uh, at all accounts, it's doing very well, and probably will continue to do very well. Yep. Um, but yeah, definitely the best like crowd I've seen since like probably like in yeah. for something. Like I mean, there's been a few others that's had a decent crowd because we. A lot of times for this, we will see the Thursday night preview show, and like when it's dead, it's usually a movie. Well, this is probably yeah, this is probably not gonna, right. not going to do so great on uh, yeah. opening weekend. Uh, probably the moment I think. Speaking of that, they got the biggest kind of reaction from the, the audience we saw it with was when Wolverine finally dons. He had the suit on for most. Oh of it. yeah, here we go. The baby. suit. The, he loses the sleeves on the suit, and he also gains the mask. The mask. What baby. did you uh, What did you think of the mask, Todd? So after all this wait. I still thought it worked. Yeah. I thought it looked good. It looked good. It had the, the whited out eyes, which yeah. I thought, is that going to work? And it did. It, yeah. it really popped. It looked awesome. Yeah. Like <laughs> I, you know, I think Hugh Jackman has said in, you know, in some interviews, like I, I don't, you know, looking back on it, like why didn't we ever do this sooner? And like, yeah, yeah. like I've always been a proponent of that. I'm like, I, that's my, some of my big problems with like some of the things that I kind of attribute the first X-Men movie, like from, for making it like kind of, like almost like well you obviously we can't put them in their anything that looks like their actual costume yeah everything has to be like black leather it made it like a faux pas to like for years to like really have a colorful costume yeah. and like and I kind of blame that film for kind of starting that trend for yeah. a while everything had to be black and leather and had to be dark and like you, it works. Like, I think that costume would have worked in an Avengers film. It would have worked. Oh, yeah. And, like, we've seen costumes kind of get more and more comic accurate as we went. I mean, I think it works. And I think you said after you were surprised how long he kept it on. Yeah, I, I, we had talked before. I was like, you know, Jack was in that thing five minutes time. Yeah, but no, he, he's in it for, like, a <laughs> good, good while, a yeah. scene where they chop through the Deadpool variants. He keeps it for pretty much all the third act until... Mm. 
well, not but the little finale of the third act yeah. until it's basically that's resolved and we go back to everybody and even you know, at that point Deadpool's not even in costume. It's just yeah. happy, happy family, fun time around the table. <laughs> right. You're gonna do some cocaine. <laughs> you know, that kind yeah. of stuff. So like, yeah, he kept it on a while. It's not like in Thor, like the first Thor was like, Oh, he's got his helmet on. It's yeah. gone. And you never see it again. It's always been our thing. If you have a mask, wear the mask. If you have yeah. a helmet, wear the guy's dang helmet. Yeah, that's the problem. <laughs> like you cast people and like maybe you get away from it to film and then they get super big and then like they refuse to put it on because they don't want to like that's their that's their breadwinner their face that's yeah. that's how the people see them but like you know it works like it, it works like i if if this character returns as if hugh jackman returns or if um the character returns in the mcu proper like i would hope we would see the mask yeah. the mask version like it, it's fine it works it works it, fine maybe not all the time but like it needs to be sprinkled in there a, yeah. a good amount like I mean I think it I think it worked great in this so like that was probably the biggest pop this, the film got overall uh, let's kind of talk about the ending Todd so the ending of the film it kind of centers around Deadpool and Wolverine needing to find a way to take down Cassandra and escape the void we get Deadpool Wolverine Electra Blade Gambit and X-23 they kind of assault her, her Ant-Man skeleton base yes from the dead corpse of Ant-Man we learned earlier that Cassandra killed Magneto and melted down his helmet but the, the Juggernaut's helmet functions uh, pretty similarly so the plan is Deadpool Wolverine they, they want to cap that helmet over her and try to make basically try to get her or strike up a deal with her to help them get back home yep. which they eventually do after Pyro's little uh, coup that he tries to pull off there. He comes in after they've capped her and domed her with Juggernaut's head and shoots her a couple times. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> But they eventually make a deal with her and she's like, oh, I just so happen to have this MacGuffin that can get you back home, which is uh, one of Doctor Strange's uh, sling rings, you know, the that stuff so she opens up a portal they go back through uh but she's kind of pissed at that point the paradox kind of like tried to set her up sent Pyro, uh, pyro to kill her she falls in back out of the void uh she does the whole finger fuck paradox is mine right, figures right. out about the time ripper uh you want to take us through kind of how that wraps up here and how the film ends so basically uh the uh, shoot i forgot his name paradox, paradox. <laughs> sorry folks yeah he kind of lets Deadpool and Wolverine know that there's a you know a slight chance they may can you know you know blow up that time ripper if they have to get down there and one of them has to do like a channel between the antimatter and matter portions yeah. of that machine. So, Red wire and blue wire. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And so at first, you know, it you kind of led to believe it's going to be Wolverine. You know, this is his redemptive arc. This is it. And, you know, he failed his universe, but he's going to save Wade's. And then right. the last second, Wade punches him, goes in the door itself, locks it behind him, and Wade's going to do it. This is how he matters. Mm. This is his matter moment. And then, it, as it turns out, one's not enough. It takes both the boys right. to make that connection. And they're supposed to die. Whoever did it dies, but they don't die. Right. They both survive the power just of two. fine. Power That's right. Of two. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they survive through the power of two, yeah. And so uh, Cassandra, she gets she gets took out. The machine gets took out. Uh, they actually don't wind up back in the MCU proper. They're still in the Deadpool or old Fox verse, mm. whatever you want to call it. And, you know, it's like you say, it's... Deadpool's family's okay. Wolverine's still there. He's kind of blending in, kind of making it work. And yeah. we see Deadpool kind of patching the things up with his girlfriend. And that's where we roll the credits. That's where we roll the credits. Yeah, I mean, the ending, again, it, it's the villains. It's It still has the kind of MCU villains problem where they're not yeah they're pretty standard they're none none of it's memorable paradox is not memorable cassandra's not that memorable right. she has a couple of memorable things she does and the finger fuck mind fuck thing is it's kind of interesting but you know they're pretty standard run-of-the-mill villains yeah. it, 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 it it's not the film's not about that it's not about really what the end goal is established because it needs a third act, but it's about this one. This one of those films that really is about the journey. Honestly, it is. Yeah, it's not about the finale. It's not about the destination. It's about how you get. It's to about it. how we got there and the friends we made along the way. Yeah, that's really what it is, Todd. Um, there is a mid credits and a post credit scene. Um, the mid, mid credits. The mid credits will definitely. <laughs> and I've seen people on TikTok already. The, the mid credit scene. You're not. You might not be ready, like we were not ready I for that for that, that. mid credit scene to hit you right in the feels, because mm. it's uh, it's a compilation of behind the scenes footage and like early interviews from like basically the Fox verse. There's a lot of young Hugh Jackman mm. and clips and young Pat, younger Patrick Stewart yeah. and younger Ian McKellen and younger Ryan Reynolds, and it's all set to. Good riddance, the time of your life by Green Day, Man. just to really plug that emotional string on you. Yeah. And you're not prepared for it. I, can not, I, mean, I wasn't 
ready. Yeah, I, yeah, because like, and it makes you nostalgic for those films that are mostly terrible. <laughs> but you're you kind of nostalgic I for them. You are. Yeah, but I'm like, and then you think about it, and you're like, man, yeah, like, oh, those are the days. I'm like, no, no, they weren't. No, they, they really weren't. They mostly suck. <laughs> Most of them actually suck. Yeah, but, but like, you know, just to see how far, you know, especially Hugh has come from being so young, yeah. playing Wolverine till now. Like, it, it really hits you, hits you right in the feels, Todd. Uh, and we do get a post credit scene now to kind of set this up a little bit. It involves uh, the Human Torch. The Human Torch. And we, I mentioned earlier that there was a person who had gotten their skin and muscles removed and had just been left as a pile of skeleton and organs on the on the floor of Cassandra's base. That was, in fact, Human Torch. That was just the Human Torch. Yeah, because basically <laughs> Wade kind of set him up to uh, to be killed with some of the shit talk he told back to Cassandra. So you <laughs> want to explain the post credit scene a little bit, Todd? So we go to our post credit scene, and we've seen Deadpool's kind of back at the TVA. He's kind of like, you know, I'm catching all this hell for getting Johnny Storm cured here. Let's, let's look at the footage. Yeah, because he tries to tell a few people. He's like, Johnny got himself killed. Johnny got himself killed. Yeah, like Johnny was talking shit, and like nobody believes in Wolverine's even like, oh, you set that kid up to <laughs> die. Like you, we think we're shown in the beginning that he's just he's talking mad shit at Cassandra. Yeah, um, you know, t- as this is what the Human Torch said about you. So he kind of cues up his video, and it kind of shows them when they first were captured back on this thing, heading to Cassandra's place, and it's Wolverine, and it's Deadpool, and it's Johnny Storm, and they're all tied up. And Johnny goes off on this tirade saying everything it's that Wade word had word. said word for word. I yeah. think he even embellishes some more. more. Yeah. And Deadpool's like, ah, you yeah. see? Yeah. Huh? <laughs> and it, it, it's, it's fucking, it is hilarious. Yeah. Like, it's a good... I mean, it's 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 a funny way. Like that's probably the funniest running gag through it is like the what happened to Johnny, him getting Johnny yeah. killed. You got that guy killed, and it turns out that Johnny the whole time had said every word of that and probably some more. Like right. she can lick my cinnamon ring <laughs> and like all this kind of all stuff. That. The the thing that made me laugh the most is like Johnny's just going crazy, and and Deadpool was like, "Oh girl, you crazy." <laughs> that shit cracked me up. Like I, right. it was funny. There was a lot of funny moments in this. Like, there was a lot of genuine laughs that we, you know, I know we were both kind of laughing. And, like, you know, there was, some, there was a lot of good stuff with, like, Leslie Uggams and, oh, yeah. you know, with her and her cocaine and, like, all that kind of stuff. Like, there was, you know, there's a lot of good humor. It's probably one of the funniest, maybe, if not the funniest MCU movie. Like, you know, some of the yeah. Guardian stuff. And, like, it, it's right up there it's in there, terms yeah. of comedy. Uh, I got two more things for you, Ty, before we go on to uh, okay. to, to uh, final thoughts and review uh, I was thinking about this. What what do you think's next for Deadpool, Todd? If you were if you were running Disney Marvel right now, what would you do with the character from here? Third film, you brought Hugh Jackman back. He kind of fulfilled like a big kind of passion project and like something that the fans really wanted to kind of see. What do you do with Deadpool and maybe even Wolverine from here? I do think, at least I still believe they're heading towards that Secret Wars movie. So I do definitely think we're going to see them both there. Right. Uh, you know, I do believe that this movie is going to go over like gangbusters. It's tracking really good. So I could definitely see another pairing of these two. I could see that easily happening. Right. Does Hugh Jackman wind up being our eventual MCU Wolverine proper? I don't know. He is kind of getting a little yeah. older. I don't know about that. Deadpool, please keep him going. I think this is a unique character that you can fold into the MCU, but he can still kind of stay separate, kind of be in his own little world, kind of just in movies like this. I think a big wasted opportunity would be eventually to one day not do a Deadpool and Spider-Man movie. Yeah. While you've got Tom Holland as Spider-Man, right. you've got to do that somehow. Yeah, that's kind of what I was, was thinking. And I've seen some people mentioning that online, too. Like, I think there's been a rumor. I don't know how true it is since this has kind of come out, like that they're maybe talking about like a Wolverine versus Hulk thing. That would which not could be bad. Which could be interesting. I think... You use Deadpool sparingly. I don't, you know, I don't think we need to see him. You know, he, if he's in Secret Wars, he's just around. He's kind of a cameo. Yeah, he's not the one of the I'm, major players. I'm with you though. I would like to see like more Deadpool and Friends movies. Yeah, Deadpool and Spider Man, Deadpool and Character X. Like as you go through, like I yeah. think Deadpool and Spider Man, I think is definitely something that you got needs, the two biggest mouths in the in, in, that the, in Marvel. To They've got to hook up. Yeah, that needs to happen, <laughs> especially when you you've kind of made good and brought Toby and Andrew 
your back, and you could probably bring them in and some of the other Spider-Man mm-hmm. folks that are still around from the Sam Raimi universe and, like, now the MCU proper Spider-Man, the Tom Holland. Yeah. I think that's just a license to print money at this point. Oh, yeah. If you put Deadpool and Spider-Man or You're gonna make it hand Spider-Man and this amazing Deadpool friend. Yeah. You know what I mean? You yeah. you just print it. You're printing you it. Have my, you have money from yeah. all of us. Like, I think you do something like that, and I think you keep it to, like, kind of team up nostalgia fan servicey movies like this you know some people might not like that idea but like i think i think that's the best use of this character i think he where he really fits in the best is like yeah. something like this yeah he, he this is this is his wheelhouse because that's a, a lot allows a lot of opportunity for fourth wall breaking and jokes and like callbacks and like it, it's a perfect character to do that stuff and i think again a spider-man and deadpool team up with a license to print money just like this is i think this will be you know, it might not be in game two billion dollars or anything, but I think this is probably has a good chance of cracking a billion. I, oh, I yeah. think. I, I think I, it'll come just, close. Yeah. Just based on what we're seeing so far. Mm-hmm. Last thing before reviews, Todd, I uh, I wanted to throw this at you. So. Um, Again, we talked about big turnout Mm -hmm. since Endgame, one of the bigger turnouts. Uh, Quite a few more MCU movies than I thought, but since Endgame, the big question I'm going to throw at you, I'm going to list the titles here so everybody kind of we're on the same page. Like, is this the best MCU movie since Endgame? So here's my what I got at you. After Endgame, Spider-Man Far From Home, Black Widow, Shang-Chi, Eternals, Spider-Man No Way Home, Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness, Love and Thunder, Black Panther, Wakanda Forever, Ant-Man, Quantumania, Guardians 3, The Marvels, and now this. Is this the best MCU movie since Endgame? Right off the bat, i got to take two out of the equation because I have not watched uh, Wakanda Forever or Quantumania. I have not, <laughs> I have not watched Quantumania, I'll be honest, too. Now, I... It ain't better, dude. It's, I really, really love me some Guardians 3. I have a hard time putting anything above there's, Guardians there's 3. There's two. It's, it's No Way Home and it's Guardians 3, yeah. I think. So, it's really... It's battling those three, it's, I think. It's, yeah, it's a battle between those three, yeah. So, what do you think? I'm going to make you answer that. <laughs> if I'm, if it's been a while since I saw uh, No Way Home, but I'm going to go Guardians 3, I'm mm-hmm. going to go No Way Home, and I'm going to go this. I think that's fair. I think that's fair. I would, um, of those three, I don't want to watch Guardians again because it makes me too sad. <laughs> no, yeah, of man, those three, it tires you I up. don't want to see any more rocket abuse or like animal review right. abuse, even though they're CGI. But yeah, I think it's right under Guardians too. I mm-hmm. think it's like I think it's Guardians. I think it's this, and it's probably no way home. Okay, like I, I'm I'm in a complete agreement with you. Like, there's been a lot more than I thought, but like you know. Uh, tell us in the comments. Do you agree with that? Do you have a favorite? What's your What's your three best films yeah. since uh, Let since us know where you slot it in. Put yeah. it in there. But I think it's right there with uh, a Guardians. Not the same type of film, but I think the same quality level and, I, and the enjoyment that I had from it is is about to that same level. All right, Ty. Let's wrap it up here. Give us your review score and final thoughts for Deadpool and Wolverine. Uh, you know, with maybe perhaps a tight, la- tight, tight. <laughs> How tight? tight? How tight do you want it, Todd? <laughs> so uh, let me just try this again. Sure. So maybe we're just a tad light on story here. Right. Uh, maybe the old Marvel villain issues kind of creep up, but I still think there's a lot to love here with Deadpool and Wolverine. I think it succeeds on a lot of levels for me still. Uh, you know, it's a long lost love letter to the old now gone Fox verse. Uh, you know, and if we finally would this movie get the combination of perhaps the two best things that ever came out of that universe, Ryan Reynolds' Deadpool, yep. Hugh Jackman's Wolverine. Uh, I think it's just a fun blast of a movie, and I give it an eight. I thought it was great. And it was tight. <laughs> it was very tight, folks. Uh, Todd likes his movies tight. Um, yeah, I'm in complete agreement. I was really going back and forth between an eight and a nine. Eight just feels right to say it's great. I don't think it's amazing. Right. It has problems, and they're very mild, and they're very it, – it, the problems that it has were things that I figured it would have. Yeah. I didn't figure it would we would have a fantastic villain. I didn't figure we would have a super compelling story. story. It's about these characters and like I said, the journey yeah. and, and, and some of the stuff that we do along the way. It's 
it's you know and to like again we've we spent eight weeks um kind of shitting on a disney property so let me give them their flowers a little bit because like to their credit like they let feige and team and sean levy and ryan reynolds and hugh jackman they let them seemingly do what they wanted mm-hmm. maybe there'll be stories years from now that says well disney said we, we couldn't do this we couldn't make a walt disney hitler joke or something but like they let them pretty much do like this it, the, the action is there the violence is there the language is there it's all there they they let them make fun of they made fun of themselves they made fun of the mcu they made fun of fox they mm-hmm. made fun of all of it and then disney seemingly never really said no disney, disney even let them put out a, a hugh jackman's mouth sex mouth popcorn bucket <laughs> right like they they greenlit all that so mm-hmm. for all the bad stuff disney and the poor decisions it made does it make up for it no but in this case i will say good job disney just not getting in the fucking way right not getting in fucking up something that is a license for you to print money even with an R-rated movie Mm -hmm. and this proves when it's done right and there's care behind it that R-rated movies are still viable Mm -hmm. because those are kind of dying nowadays like I love a good R-rated movie like and there's not many of them because they don't they don't they don't make as much money but this is a a comic book franchise that has a license to kind of print money if you keep the quality up and I think this is as good as the other two. I think it's probably I still probably put Deadpool one as my number one just because yeah. that kicked it off and it was such a grueling endeavor and pretty much Ryan Reynolds had to leak the footage to ever get it made. Right. And like it was such a, a miracle that film got made and was as good and it was on a kind of a kind of a shoestring budget and it, you know, turned into what it is. And I think it's like the, it's that one you know, Deadpool and Wolverine, probably Deadpool 2 gotcha. in my list. But, like, I think it's a great film. I think it's an 8 overall. I think um, if you're listening to this and you haven't seen it, I would definitely say support it. Yeah, definitely. I think it's definitely worth your money. Like, you know, maybe maybe eat before you go. Don't pay theater concession prices. Right. Like, I know that's what keeps the theaters in business, but, man, that's gougy. <laughs> man, it's gougy. And we there is a real be a real conversation about how theaters – Get re- don't get reimbursed for ticket sales, but that's a topic for another day. But like, go out, see it, support it. If you can see it in the first week, I think it would be a better experience seeing with that kind of audience that maybe you know, hadn't had a chance to see it. They're yeah. still pumped. They're still excited. It's still going to give you those reactions. But I think it's definitely a good addition to the MCU. Is the MCU back on track? I wouldn't go that far. We'll have to see. We'll have to see. I think the next thing coming, we got a we got our new Captain America. Uh, was it new Brave New World? Brave New World. Yeah. Um, Interesting. I'm not big on the Sam Wilson, mostly Anthony Mackie. I'm not big on with that. <laughs> right. Again, get those comments ready. Because <laughs> uh, he's black, Cody. No, I just don't like Anthony Mackie. He's never been one of my an actor that I really cared for. But we're getting you know some Red Hulk stuff. We'll see. We'll, we'll see. see. We'll see if this can kind of get back on track. They Marvel's kind of said they're pulling back. They're they were like. You know, pedal to the floor, show, 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 movie, 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 and now they're pulling back and hopefully focusing more on quality. So we'll see, uh, because we need a movie now to figure out where the MCU is actually going. If you're looking for this to set up any future stuff, it doesn't. It doesn't. It's its own thing, and it always needed to be that, but now it's time to see where's the direction, because early on we knew it was the, the pie in the sky was Thanos. And that's all come and gone, mm-hmm. and it's kind of just meandered its fucking way through like eight movies, yeah, with no direction. As they kind of poke fun at it in this movie, the multiverse thing really ain't working. <laughs> yeah, it, yeah, exactly. <laughs> they, it's really not working. Yeah. So maybe we'll see what direction the MCU is going. But just getting back on track to this film, I think it's a great film. I think you, you know everybody should go out and see it if you enjoy this yeah. type of thing. Um, support it while it's at the cinemas. You know, good things should be supported, and there's good films, unfortunately, that haven't done as well as this will, but. Um, I think we enjoyed it. Uh, I'd love to see it again. We probably won't until it comes out on home video, but I mean, I would not be opposed to seeing it again. It's one of those that like, yeah. there's probably stuff that you were still missing. There'll oh be yeah. Easter egg videos for, for weeks after this one, I'm sure. But uh, yeah, great film. Go out and see it. Check it out. Todd, I think that's it for this episode. All right, man. I think that's it. If you enjoyed the video, please like and subscribe. Feel free to send us an email or get in touch with us on social media. All the information is down at the bottom of your screen. Tile Capes will return. We want to thank you so much for watching. Until next time, bye, guys. Take care, guys.